Hey guys, it's Angela, back with another classic. Today we're going to do a rainbow rose. I'm going to show you how to blend the basic colors of the rainbow and transition them one from another. In one rose, I'll be using food coloring and acrylic paint. And then I'll show you the other where I only used acrylic paint. You know those very intensely colored rainbow roses that are really expensive in the florist? Well, we're going to achieve that same look with coffee filters. You can really use this technique to transition any colors that you like. But I'm going to show you with the base colors of the rainbow. Here are the base colors that I used. Purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. And I used a pink for a transition. On the bottom, I used McCormick's Neon Pink, Yellow, Neon Green, Neon Blue, and Neon Purple as the food colorings. And then you see the second row where I used the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple acrylic paints. And then the third row is where I mixed the transition colors and here's how they came out. You don't have to use the food color again. You don't have to use these colors. But these are the color charts that I made for my project. You're going to need glossy Mod Podge, a foam brush, a green, a dark and light for the leaves, a flat brush, something to cover your surfaces, school glue, I used glue all, bad idea, use school glue. And then you're going to need something to cut the wire and a pair of scissors, and some wire, coffee filters, some twigs, or you can use a skewer or floral, floral wire. We're going to take three coffee filters, fold them in half, and then fold them in thirds. Now we're going to cut off the edges of the coffee filters and then we're going to round it out to make the shape of a petal. And then we're going to open it up and separate those sections into individual pieces. I'm just good at caring too much. Is it too much to After we separate them, we're going to cut the tips off about a half an inch. Now we're going to take each section of those, they're separated into threes, and we're going to dip them each into water and lay them out so that we can paint them. Wet your brush and apply the base color to the center of each petal. With the red, apply the pink transition color to the left side of the petal. This helps to make the red transition into the orange petal. At the base of the red flower, I applied a drop or two of red food coloring and then I blended it with a wet brush. I turned it over and reinforced the colors on the other side. Blend out the lines between each color with a wet brush. And now take the orange and apply it to the right side of the red petal. Next, I did orange. I'm going to put the red on the right side or the left side of the petal and the yellow, which is the next color on the right side of the petal. So you'll always have the base color in the center. On the left side you will have the previous color and on the right side you'll have the next color. And then I applied food coloring. Uh, I believe I used yellow in this case onto the center at the base of the petal just like before. And we're going to repeat this process with each color. Make sure that the back and the front have both been saturated with color on each petal set. Apply more color as needed. Remember, what we're going to want is never to have a strict change from one color to the next. If still you don't feel like you have enough color deposited, just apply more until you're satisfied. You can also blend the paint with your fingers. 
using red here where the transition pink was, but you can still use pink if you want. I just wanted it to be a little bit darker and closer to the actual flower. Even though I'm about to add a little bit more color, I wanted to lift them off the surface of the paper so that it wouldn't stick so bad and I wouldn't squeeze the petal picking it up and remove some of the color from my next step. Don't forget to keep wetting your brush. are the yellow, green, then blue, and purple. The base color goes in the center, the left side represents the previous petal color, and the right side represents the next petal color. So my transitions will be right uh, on the edges of the flower and I'll blend it in. For the blue, I'll be using neon blue food coloring. For the purple, I'll be using neon purple food coloring. For the green, I'll be using neon green food coloring, and for the yellow, I'll simply use the yellow food color. Just as a reminder, I'm going to be doing it in this order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I'm just good at caring too much. feel that you have added too much of a color just go back in with the base color and start over blending if you feel that you overdid the food coloring at any point try using a wet brush to blend it in but if that doesn't work use a dry paper towel to remove a lot of saturation and if you just need to remove a little use a damp paper towel separate them and let them dry. And here's our completed petals. Now let's start assembling the rows. Now take a skewer or a paintbrush or something small and round and round off the edges of each rose petal. If you're right-handed, start on the right and work your way around to the left. If you're left-handed, start on the left and work your way around to the right. I'm just good at caring too much. I'm just good at caring too much. Is it too much? Make a crease in each rose petal by folding it in half and creasing it from the bottom all the way to about the center of the petal. Separate the rose petals into groups of two colors. Put 
glue on the left side of the um, orange petal or on the right side of the red petal and glue it with the orange petal overlapping. For the green and yellow, overlap the yellow over the green. For the blue and purple, overlap the purple over the blue. The reason for this overlap is to integrate both ends of the rose petals spectrum when you wrap it around the stick. Overlap the red and orange over the yellow and green and the yellow and green over the blue and purple. It should be the shape of a half circle and then glue each layer of petals over itself. Make sure that the colors are overlapping each other. A purple on top of purple, blue on top of blue, green on top of green, and so on and so on. And then place a bead of glue around the bottom edge of that and wrap it around your flower. Give it a little twist at the base to secure it and then open the petals as desired. Make sure that when you're wrapping the flower petals around this twig, that you do it loosely so that you will have room to open the rose petals. Starting from the bottom and working your way up, you can arrange the petals within the rose close to the stem and also on the tips. Make sure that you're satisfied with this arrangement before the glue completely dries. It's harder to move it at that point. If you want your rose to be more rounded at the base, or at the bottom of the flower, grab the edges of the flower, wrapping your hands around the top of the flower and pressing down towards the stem lightly. If you like, you can add a bead of glue to some of the inside of the rose petals to secure them in place so that you can arrange the order the way you like instead of having it flopping around and being random. You can place the petals wherever you think they look the best. Just use a dot of glue, not too much. Do this loosely. You don't want your rose to look squished or flat. You still want to give the illusion that the petals are loose and free, but they're arranged exactly how you like them. Let your flower completely dry before moving on to the next step as to not ruin the arrangement of the petals. Tighten the center of the rose, grab the center petal and twist in the direction that you wrap the rose and let the flower arrange itself by letting go. If it still needs to be a little tighter, continue this process until you're satisfied with the results. To make the leaves, we'll need one teaspoon of paint and two tablespoons of water, stirred thoroughly, and then dip in your coffee filters. You will need two light color green petals or coffee filters for the flower and one dark green. Dip the coffee filters completely, submerge them completely into the paint, and squeeze them out and lay them flat to dry. Or you can blow dry them or dry them in an oven of 200 degrees for about 10 minutes. Here's an example of the different green paint colors that I had to choose from. I chose to use the lighter green and the darker one. Now glue one light green filter 
to one dark green filter. Make sure the glue is evenly distributed so that when you cut your leaves, there won't be any gaps in between the edges. I'm just good at caring too much. I'm just good at caring too much. Now apply a generous layer of glossy Mod Podge onto the dark green side of the leaf. dry or blow dry it with a blow dryer while trying to keep it as flat as possible. Now cut it in half and then in one and a half or one and three quarter inch slices probably maybe you can get about five of these out of one side or depending on the size of your leaf you might get less or more now cut one end into a shape of a stem and then point and round the other end to simulate a leaf that you have your leaf shape, crease it into halves and fold each side upwards on an angle like an accordion shape. To make the floral tape, cut one of the petals or one of the coffee filters into half inch strips. Apply glue and use them as floral tape. Starting at the base of the flower, angle the tape downwards and wrap it around from the top of the flower all the way until you're ready for the stopping point. Covering up the bunched up part of the base that you might not want to look at. Also, we're going to attach leaves, so we'd like it to be nice and neat. by a quarter inch small pie shaped pieces and round off the wide end and leave the tip pointy for the stamen. I used five of them but you can use however many you feel necessary. Make sure you press everything down nice and close. Now pinch each one of the stamen in half, creating a little crease down the center of each one, and then bunch it towards the center or towards the stem to make it a slight wrinkle. part of the leaf and wrap it around a six inch piece of wire. Then we're going to cover it with our same floral tape that we used in the flower itself. If needed, tighten the floral tape by twisting 
and twisting until you feel the tightness that you think you need. I'm just good at caring too much. Is it too much to ask that you be all mine? I never was good at sharing. I'm just good at caring too much. After you've decided how long you want the leaf stem to be, attach it with the floral tape to the other portion of the flower. The flower that has the leaf is the flower that I made with only using acrylic paint and water. The other flower without the stem is the flower that I made using food coloring, acrylic paint, and water. Aside from changing the texture of the paper and making it a little bit more soft or just softening the transition just a little bit, I don't think it made much difference, but it was fun to do it anyway. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate your support, and I hope that you use this project, and I hope that you find many applications to use it in. And I'll hopefully see you soon in another video bringing you more flowers. Thanks for watching, guys.